Shelly Miscavige. She has not appeared in public since 2005. Where's Shelly and what happened? Where is Shelly? We're looking at like 17 years of a person just missing. Shelly Miscavige was given into the sole care of L. Ron Hubbard by her parents when she was 12. This is where Shelly is believed to be being held captive. Do you believe that Shelly Miscavige is a threat today? Oh, absolutely. She's seen it all. She's been by his side the whole time. Shelly Miscavige. She has not appeared in public since 2005. Where's Shelly and what happened? Where is Shelly? We're looking at like 17 years of a person just missing. Shelly Miscavige was given into the sole care of L. Ron Hubbard by her parents when she was 12. This is where Shelly is believed to be being held captive. Do you believe that Shelly Miscavige is a threat today? Oh, absolutely. She's seen it all. She's been by his side the whole time. Welcome to the channel. I am incredibly excited today. This is my series on where is Shelly Miscavige. And as you can see, my incredible guest for today, please welcome Leah. I'm so glad you're here, Leah. Thank you. Pleasure, Claire. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazingly beautiful as always. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And to you inside and out, Claire. Oh, thank you. You know how I feel about you. I love you. Love you. And so for for background, just so you understand, and um my inspiration for doing this series is that I have incredible respect for um your courage in standing up and saying, Where is Shelly? And as we all know, this has become a, almost a mainstream question at this point. And I thought it worthy to keep the exploration of that question going, because as you and I both know, um, it's common practice in Scientology for someone to vaporize, and it's simply not okay. Right. Well, what's funny is, uh, you know, we all know this, but when we continue to try to get the word out there by contacting uh, news organizations or just simply doing it ourselves. Uh, I'm often asked what's new. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Have you seen her? Right. So what's new to you? Um, she's still missing. Yes. That's what's new. And if it's your sister, your daughter, your friend, your aunt, uh, or your coworker or somebody that you knew, um, how would you feel if you simply couldn't get in touch with a human being? Right. And that almost 15 years have gone by and this person hasn't been seen in public. Regardless of what people say or what is rumored to be, I haven't seen her, no one has seen her in public, and that's the information I'm going on, okay, that yes. I don't even know, and you don't even know, those at home, if Shelly is even alive. Right. And that's news. That should be news. This is not North Korea. This is America. We should be able to do a welfare check on a human being and get an answer. Now, Scientology loves to say that I've been told and the public have been told that um, contact has been made. And um, however, when I filed my uh, missing persons report, because you know there's only so many reports one can file, um, uh, I wasn't given information other than uh, a detective who has since passed away, who told me, that he couldn't give me any information about that he saw her personally as opposed to a representative and claire mm -hmm. you could probably speak more about this yes when you join the c organization which is the paramilitary uh section of scientology and the c or um just to go over that for a second for everybody i know some of you have heard this um, but there's a difference between civilian Scientologists and the Sea Org. And the Sea Org is something that Claire 
Mark, Mike, Aaron were part of where they sign billion year contracts. And that means basically that if they don't achieve the mission of, Scientolo of Scientology, which is to make 80% of the planet Scientologist and bring governments under the control of Scientology, uh, they will have to return next lifetime and do it again. So the billionaire contract, although you know it's been categorized, Claire, as symbolic, it actually isn't. The model it isn't. The motto of the Sea Organization, and you guys could look it up for yourself. You could just look up the Sea Organization, and it will show you their symbol and the motto, which is "We come back." Right. Exactly. Yeah. So when they join the Sea Org, they give up everything. Um, basically, their civilian Scientology life. Right. So if you're a if you're a if you're a Scientologist, you're a Scientologist. If you're a Sea Org member, you're a Sea Org member and a Scientologist. But a Scientologist is not also a Sea Org member. So there's right. A, right? The Sea yeah. Org runs Scientology. And Sea yes. Org members, like Claire and Mike, run us, run parishioners, run civilian Scientologists. They're in charge of our everyday lives. Like, imagine you're a person in the world you're going about your regular job. Let's say you don't work for a Scientologist. You're going about your regular job. Whatever happens in your regular job is monitored by the Sea Org. Right. So you're not. So there's a hovercraft over your whole life. If you mess up, you have any altercation with anybody at work and your family, Scientology, the Sea Org, is going to be involved in that. So because right. you're going in every day. Yeah, a it's a, it is yeah, and it is exactly yeah. like Big Brother in 1984. Correct. The Correct. eyes are watching everywhere. Everywhere. So if I get into a situation at work, I'm going. Remember, Scientologists have to go in every day, two and a half hours a day minimum. And if you say, "Oh, I had a bad day at work," you know, they're like, "Okay, go to this department, and we want to know exactly what you did because your job as a Scientologist is to always pretend." That you're a perfect human being because your job as a Scientologist, just as a Scientologist, is to always appear as though your life is perfect. So you can't tell your non-Scientology friends that you're having problems in your marriage, at work, everything's great. So you 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 basically create a whole lie, a whole lie of yourself. And that's how you're operating in life. Yes. But exactly. you're on the job. Yeah. And in fact, you can't even say, oh, you didn't have a good time doing your Scientology training or your Scientology counseling. You can't say that to anybody. You couldn't just say to somebody, oh, I had a terrible counseling session tonight. No, <laughs> you don't, even though we're paying for it, by the way, again, Scientology yeah. is a price list. And I remind people, this is not like any religion. It isn't a religion. Um, however, the IRS has acknowledged this as such. So um, I'll respect that for, for now, right? But, yes. but the truth of the matter is there's a prepay, there's a there's a price list. You have to prepay for all of your Scientology services, and it's quite expensive. So you're paying for a service, and yet you're not allowed to say, I'm not happy with the service, because once again, you will get penalized and interrogated for having said that. That's right. So your life is always monitored always every day all day all night and that's what the sewer does right there they are um uh regulating watching you and every organization of like they are in charge of the delivery of scientology and scientologists life yes. so all of that to say claire that when you join the sewer you give up all of your possessions you live communally the Sea Org pays for your uniforms, pays for your food. You have virtually no credits. You have nothing. You're getting paid fifty to one hundred dollars a week. So if you ever leave the Sea Org, you have no pension to speak of, and you have no resume, basically. That's right. But you also sign over legal rights. So you agree that somebody could represent you. A Scientology right. lawyer could represent you. So all that to tell everybody that I still have no data as to if that detective saw Shelly herself or saw or there was a representative 
talking to the police officers now to the detectives now we now have found out right although we always knew this claire because part of our job you as a sea org member me as a civilian scientologist is that we are supposed to ally ourselves with um the powers of the world every every kind of important institution education uh the criminal justice system um uh uh, civil servants, I mean, you know, the, we're supposed to make nice an ally or get close to uh, police departments, um, uh, politicians, yes. any area that is of influence, Scientologist, Scientologists, so, you know, parishioners, civilians are supposed to infiltrate these organizations by becoming famous um, becoming successful, like Grant Cardone is doing that constantly. He's right. allying himself uh, to powerful people so that those people are like, hey, you're pretty cool. Like, you're a cool dude. Look at you and your wife. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys are fancy and successful. And what do you guys do? And then, bam, Scientology, right? Right. Or they ally themselves with powerful people. Um, so that those people start to depend on them mm -hmm. and need them as friends or, or, or allies. And they will, again, it's all part of the, um, structure to infiltrate. That's um, right. Exactly. Like they did yeah. in Clearwater with the city officials yes. bringing down Tom Cruise, John Travolta to, to do the, uh, Fort Harrison event sure. that they do every year to kind of wine yep. and dine anyone of influence that they need to be able to call on for help. Correct. And and similarly with the Riverside County Sheriff's Office, um, where you guys were in the hole and all the abuses were taking place. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it, please see Going Clear, read Mark Headley's book, Mike's book, my book, Amy's book. There, who else has written a book? Jeff Hawkins. Jeff Hawkins. Chris Selton. Uh, yes. Uh, um, I mean, the list goes uh, on and Lisa on. Blue yeah. Sky. But anyway. Yes. 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 So, Fairface Messiah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, Prison of Belief, Lawrence Wright. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Inside Scientology, Janet Janet uh, Reitman. Reitman. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Janice oh, Reitman. Yes. Reitman. Commodore's yeah. Messenger. Yeah. Oh. Long list of very. Yeah, we, should, we should actually, um, so that we don't forget anybody. Because I, I also think Chris Shelton wrote a book. So I just want everybody to be in. Like, I never, like, I never want to leave anybody out, you know, so we could just. Yes. Maybe do right. I'll make a complete list. Oh, yeah. And even Jenna Miscavige Hill, her book. Hello. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely right. <laughs> this is what I mean, right? We can get ourselves into trouble because we don't want to. So um, our point to this was, um, if you don't know what the hole was, uh, uh, please find out uh, what was going on in Riverside County. Uh, called Golden Era Productions. Um, and uh, one of those uh, detectives that works there, uh, this this particular show didn't air on the aftermath. However, he came out and told us uh, that they have been what's called safe pointing, everybody, um, Alvin Hubbard's policy on safe pointing, that they have been safe pointing them for years. He's been invited to the Golden Era Productions site many times that Scientology has put on barbecues. Um, and I think it was Mark who gave us all a list of all the donations that Sea Org members give to uh, uh, councilmen and women. Yes, so, which is entirely rigged because of course, Sea Org members have no money to be making donations like that. Yes, and maybe you should post that, Claire, that document. Yes, I absolutely um, will. And, and oh, and golf them. tournaments and all kinds yes. of events. Yes. 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 And so they've been doing that for years. So it's very difficult to get them to do anything because for years they've been uh, friends with uh, Scientology. So they're not apt to do a whole lot on behalf of people asking. And so the same uh, has happened at the LAPD Hollywood division. Um, and now I also want to say that I am, I support our, uh, brave men and women who without them, uh, it, it would be mayhem. And I'm not, a, I'm not, uh, down with the whole, uh, none of that. I, right. you know, Absolutely. I, 
there are bad cops and yes. there are a lot of good cops. And there are. Without them, uh, you know, we'd all be in a lot of trouble. So Yeah. And speaking, speaking yeah. of Riverside Police Department, by the way, um, there was a woman that was, um, and she's since passed away, um, but she was the in, char in charge of the officers that responded when Mark was escaping from the headquarters. And she is the reason that we have a police report of that incident because Mark was just trying to get the heck out of there. This woman looked and saw that he was married to me. And therefore she knew that I was still there and she insisted that report get filed. Wow. Yeah. And this is what, and this is what we mean, right? It's not yes. every sheriff. It's not, and I've had ex amazing experiences and I support them. And, and I, yeah, of course I don't support uh, the bad eggs and those who stand by and do nothing. Exactly. Uh, while, while they kill people. But the, um, but what, but what my point to this was, if, if, with the LAPD Hollywood Division specifically, um, the person who was in charge of of, of my report on Shelley uh, is uh, was speaking at Scientology events um, uh, on human trafficking of all things. Unbelievable. And so he would not give me any information. So when when Scientology and Scientology knows the truth, they do this purposely and intentionally. Uh, they know that no information was given to me, the person who spent thousands and thousands of dollars on trying to, after this, uh, hiring a lawyer to go through the Freedom of Information Act and still couldn't get any information. I just want to know that they saw her. They wouldn't answer me. They wouldn't give me an information. An informa and as incredulous as that sounds, I mean, I was probably doing what everybody who's watching this was doing. What are you talking about? I'm the one who filed it. What are you what are you saying to me? I'm the one who's asking. No one's you're telling me the person who filed the report. So we we did yeah, all that, this. like they couldn't yeah. even affirm that they had obtained proof of life, even. Correct. Unbelievable. Well, they, said she, they said, well, Claire, I believe they did say she is fine and she doesn't want contact or so i don't i don't exactly remember that she wants to remain a private person or something i don't even remember because mm -hmm. i was like you what, are, did you see her did somebody else say she's fine or did she say she did you see her right well, you did see her was yeah. she with somebody was she with a handler but there was no questions being answered unbelievable so, and, and i'll say it again you're not gonna ah uh, like ha aha uh, me moment like it all I'm asking, listen, David Miscavige is directing uh, Sea Org members, people I knew, people I didn't know, to do videos on all of us, all of our family, all of our, not our family, because it's people who weren't our family, I should say, and exactly. friends who are Scientologists to do these discrediting, uh, intentionally false and lineless videos about us. Well, why don't you have Shelly make a video telling me to go F myself? Right. I know. And to me, that's that's where it's mind blowing. Uh, Miscavige, David Miscavige has consistently used people to yeah. his benefit. And yet they he will not dispel this question and put it to rest of where why? is Shelley Miscavige? But exactly. Why? why? Yes. Why do you think? I think that she is not in a state of mind or that's number one or if alternatively, she's alive. right. If she's alive even physically where is she i know it's presumed she's in uh running springs in california but, but we don't actually knows. know that exactly no. and second of all i don't i think that if he would have her do that video she would be she would now know that there are people who care about her and her whereabouts and her well-being outside of Scientology. correct i mean correct. in the time that i worked with her in religious technology center at yeah. one point, she told me, when you're in this, at this level of the organization, you have foregone your right to escape. And obviously, hey, I I got out of there, but she needs to know that she can get out of there too. Well, you know, I don't know if I've ever said this, but because, you know, so many things happened to us and so many moments of abuse have gone by where we're like, huh, that is abuse, huh? that was criminal, huh, that what, you know, but, 
it takes time to to decompress and educate yourself on what is what happened to all of you, right? But absolutely, and you too. Yeah, but it, you know, it it it's relative, right? It's like what you dealt with, you were conditioned to accept. What Mike has gone through, what you know, what I mean, what people have seen and experienced, and you know your pain's valid, my pain's valid, right? Absolutely. Everybody's pain's valid. And, and, um, but w when it comes to this, right? Like, I remember when I met with um, David Miscavige um, at the end there, he said to me, do you know what I effing do all day, Leah? And you said this to me when you were here in LA and it's it, like that's what happens like it sparks a memory that you I don't know you suppress or it's yeah it's a lot I, of hurtful memories <laughs> you know what I spend my effing time doing all day Leah? finding and rooting out SPs all day all night I have to put Shelly somewhere so she doesn't get subpoenaed by SPs wow yeah that's what he said. Yeah. Because Shelly, Shelly knows everything. Shelly knows, Shelly knows everything. Shelly was there for every, if not all of the abuses. She, I mean, we've gone over this on the aftermath that, that Tom DeVox said that he was going nuts, that he was losing it. Um, you have said that she has said that she was worried about him having uh, Jenny Linson around him. And yes. if you guys don't know who Jenny Linson is, please look her up. She's a special little breed of evil. Um, she really is. Uh, and yeah, and Shelly also um, on several occasions expressed she was concerned that David Miscavige was going to have a psychotic break, which in my opinion, he did several times. Well, he he's psychotic. Yes. Yeah. Not that he's having psychotic breaks more than he's actually psychotic. Oh yeah, no, completely. But like she even even above and beyond the day-to-day -day psychosis, like she thought he was gonna go absolutely nuts. I don't know if she was concerned that he was going to I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Do what he did to his wife? Right. Okay. Um, the other thing that we're asked about, and, and I think you could shed some light on this, is we're asked, does Shelly have other family? Yes, she and she does. So she has another, she has three sisters. Um, two of those sisters, one of well, one one of them, her older sister Clarice, is still in the C organization, to my knowledge. So she's no help. Okay. Exactly. Then her another sister, Suzette. Mm -hmm. She is now out of the C organization, but to my knowledge, in good standing and therefore following Scientology directives still. So she's not helping her sister. Right. And then yeah, she but she's out. She's out of the C org, but not out of Scientology. That's right. And, yes. and, and if I have this correct, didn't she, Suzette, when she left the C org, didn't you and Mark help her to get her on her feet? Yes, she had been sent by um, Office of Special Affairs, the the division of Scientology that controls anybody leaving Scientology in, in addition to other nefarious matters that they oversee. They sent Suzette to Louisiana right after Hurricane Katrina, where they had her doing heavy manual labor, reconstructing houses. Suzette Wait, is- but I have a question for you. Claire. Yes, yes. She's not a science. She's not a Sea Org member. So why would OSA send her? Like, what do you mean? Like reconstructing houses? Like in the Sea Org or as a, a civilian? As a civilian. So, so the order was placed. Limited. In other oh. words, she was placed by OSA with a Scientologist who would then be keeping a very close eye on her, re still reporting to. Office of Special Affairs about her, who she's associating with, all of that, even though she's no longer in the C organization. In other words, this is how they maintain complete control of people, even though they're no longer in the C organization. But particularly, they're, but they're yes. a threat. They could yes. be a threat. So they provide them with a job yes. with a Scientologist company, 
Yes. And that so that they can keep an eye on them, but they do it in a different state. So they can't run into anybody that might be a Scientologist and go, oh, my God, you're Suzette. Why are you out of the sea or? Yes, you're Shelly Miscavige's sister. And what in the world's going on? And more so also to control and make sure that Suzette did not connect up with people she was friends with, such as Mark and I and others. Um, right, they, or that Mike and I might get a hold of her, right, and have her do something decent, like do a welfare check on her sister. Exactly, exactly, and this is how Office of Special Affairs maintains a muzzle on people who have even left the C organization. In this case, however, we we tracked down Suzette. And again, so she was a, a very talented VFX artist. That's what she did when she was at Golden Era Productions at the headquarters is she worked on all the VFX for the event videos and things like that. Mark got her a job in Los Angeles and she came back and um, and we helped her get on her, on her feet in LA. We got her reconnected with her dad, um, but she really wanted uh -huh. to. And her dad, mm -hmm. what's her dad's name? Barney? Barney, yeah. Barney, Barney, Barney. At this, so at the same time, Barney was um, where you guys were, right? Yes. And, he was, and he was doing handyman work. Yes. And he, too, was worried about his daughter, but not enough to do a damn thing about. Yes. And this is where Scientology has real teeth to destroy people's lives. Why? Explain that. Well, um, so Barney was in a relationship with a woman that was a Scientologist and was, I think he was even living in an apartment that was owned by a Scientologist and he was doing work for Scientology. And yeah. so if he were to start making a stink saying, hey, I want to see my daughter, yeah. they would declare him a suppressive person, kick him out and make sure he never, ever, ever had the chance again. Right. So they toe the line instead right. of just saying... I'm going to disagree because I'm no longer in Scientology. I'm not a Sea Org member. And I would like to have a relationship with my daughter or son. Yep. Or mother or father. Exactly. Exactly. Right. No, they destroy. They have complete control over all aspects of that and make right. it impossible well, well, to do that. Yes. And people agree by it because they don't have to agree. Yes. Right. They don't have to, to agree to this game. No. It literally will say, you literally can say, I'm good. I'd rather know my daughter than right. be beholden to your restrictive and abusive policies yes. that I'm no longer part of. But in all fairness, Claire, mm -hmm. all of you are not raised, and, and Scientologists too, but more so sewer members, not raised to have value in family. Yes. And so it makes it very easy to to separate yourself, right? Because not all family, we're, we're not talking about, you know, you should stay connected to all family, right? right. Like I'm, I'm not talking about the real world where, you know, me, I have an abusive, horrible father who is not a Scientologist. And I chose to talk to him, chose not to talk to him when I, you know, geared back up and healed myself from his abusive <laughs> ways, right? It was like... Right talk to my dad again maybe he'll love me this time maybe he'll stop abusing me maybe he'll be better to my sister's kids his mm -hmm. grandkids maybe he'll be better than my kid you know so we're talking about you just do not have a choice you believe but it doesn't matter because Scientologists believe that you live you know thousands and trillions of whatever number they put on it of lifetimes yes. And uh, so there's really no value in relationships with your children or your parents, because, you know, you'll, if they're if they're declared suppressive people, then, you know, you'll see them next time. Right. You'll see them in another lifetime. You've had thousands of children in your many, many lifetimes. You've had thousands of moms, thousands yes. of dads. Yes. What's what's this one? Right. So yeah. Suzette. So back to Suzette. Shall yes. We? So Suzette, you guys reach out to her and say, you absolutely should not be where they put you. Come here. We'll take care of you. We'll provide you a place to live, eat, and we're going to get you a great job. Yes. Where, what, to what she, to, you know, that, that goes 
with what she actually can do, right? She's exactly. like she's a quite capable artist. Um, so she does that. Yes. You guys and get a job, you take care of her. Yeah, she on her feet. Yep, she was living yeah. in the back guest house. She was renting a back guest house where we were staying. Mm -hmm. We reconnected her with many different people that she knew. She knew nobody in Lu Louisiana either, no friends. So we reconnected with her um, and she was doing amazing and, and great. And then she decided, oh, I'm going to um, get back into good standing, which of course, for people listening that have no idea what that means, it means she had to pay like thousands of dollars back to Scientology. She had to make amends, all this other thing, uh, yeah. you know, various other steps so that her sole purpose was to be able to talk to her mother again. Her mother is? Um, her mother, I can't remember her name. I think she's, I think her name is Kathy, but she's, a, she's a, still a civilian Scientologist. Because this is not Shelly's mother. Shelly's no, mother. Uh, no, Suzette is her half-sister, yes. Half-sister. Right, and so um, she did, so she then had to, um, for you guys, when we're talking about good, uh, back in good standing, it's called ATE steps. Um, not to be confused with the network, Amy. Yeah. Um, but the ATE steps, and one of the steps of the eight, uh, the ATE steps is to basically denounce the people who've helped you. That's so right. So now you have to make an enemy out of the people who've helped you. And if you want to know uh, what Marty Rathbun's doing, other than being the psychotic that he was and is, um, that's what he's doing. Yes, uh, exactly. Talking about me, I've never, I've, I've never met Marty. I don't think um, ever. I talked to him once on the phone um, to ask him if he wanted to do. Uh, this was before uh, I even had a show, and I was telling Marty, I said, you know we could do a show about Scientology to expose them. And he, I don't know if I told you the story, but he said, no. well, what's the show about? And I said, Marty, I mean, pick a topic. It could be about sex. It'd be, I mean, <laughs> Scientology is a, is an all around uh, opportunity uh, abuser. I mean, any topic, any Scientology's done it. That's right. There I are said, thousands so of stories of abuse across all, all aspects of life. So Marty, the pig that he is, he turns that story into that I said, we could basically write the show. We could be, it could be any, implying that I would be lying about saying that, like anybody needs to lie about the criminal activities of Scientology. Um, so anyway, that's what Marty's doing, attacking his best friend, Mike Rinder, um, and, and those who have helped him. He is doing A to E steps, which means that he, um, is trying to prove to Scientology that he no longer agrees with the same things that Marty has said. And also yeah. what Scientology has said about Marty. <laughs> I know. And what's crazy is that he's already on public record saying all the crimes he committed on behalf of Scientology, such as destroying documents Evidence. in the Lisa McPherson tragic, tragic death that was where she was held at the Fort Harrison and as a result of that passed away. Well, she was, she was murdered. Right. Um, yes. And Marty, Rathbun, and Marty Rathbun has um, um, admitted to destroying evidence in that case. And right. uh, he also uh, in his affidavit had said that um, he, that David Miscavige was responsible I believe for yes. because he was in charge of Lisa McPherson's, you know, case. What you know? Yep. Yeah, um, he was receiving reports every day on um, exactly what was being done in the time it, that it, she it, was being restrained at the Fort Harrison Hotel prior to her death. Right, and the when she should have gone to the hospital, and uh, that was you know five minutes away. They drove her forty five minutes away to where there would be a Scientology doctor attending. That's right. Or, but it, I, I I don't know Scientologists to be doctors, but but uh, they did have a few running around the world that would you know basically say take vitamins. Right. Um, uh, uh, anyway, so if you guys want to see that, you should look that up. The Lisa McPherson case and. Uh, Marty Rathbun's affidavit of all the crimes that he has committed. That's right. Um, but anyway, back to this. So now Suzette decides 
that uh, for talking to her um, amazing mother, Scientology mother, she's going to give up Claire and Mark now. Yes, right? that's right. Yep. And yeah. <laughs> and, and again, and again, just living her life while her sister could be um, dead, uh, being held prisoner and doing nothing about it. Okay, yeah. next sister. Yes, the next sister Who's the other is, one? is Camille. Sure. And I've never met Camille, but I know of Camille. Mm -hmm. um and i believe and i'm i'm actually not sure if she's in scientology or not i know very little about her but again we're talking about shelley's family and sisters that should and could be demanding that we get verification of where is shelley and is she still alive even could you imagine uh being alive being held at this base um, that she's rumored to be, which is called uh, CST. What do they do up there, Claire, at CST? And this is in uh, Twin Peaks, right, California? Yes, yes. So it's it's CST is Church of Spiritual Technology. This is where they um, put all of Hubbard's writings onto metal plates and they put them into titanium capsules underground so that in the event of um, a planetary destruction, um, when, it, when the dust settles and everything's, uh, you know, human life has been restored, the humans will be able to, um, pull out Hubbard's materials and resume Scientology. And, but, but you know what, let me, let me just say something though. Um, if Shelly is there, the reason she is there is because it's the most secure, um, least known location within Scientology that is very tightly controlled. Right. Um, second, probably maybe equally so to the headquarters in Gilman Hot Springs. But the problem is, is that in Gilman Hot Springs, there are many people that knew and respected Shelley and would not necessarily go along with her being held captive. Whereas it's a much smaller group of staff at the CST base. Right, and so uh, who she, who, who's likely her handler is there? So the, the people I've heard named um, is, one of them is Antonella Tizi, which is someone who, she Antonella was worked under me for, for four years. She's a very tall Italian woman who has been in Scientology since the 70s. She's been in Religious Technology Center since the 80s. She was um, Shelley's counselor, her Scientology counselor, also known as oh, auditor. Interrogator. Yes, oh. interrogator, yeah, um, in the years that I was there. Another one is Anne Rathbun, Marty's ex-wife, and Josem, or Josim, I'm not sure how, how you say it. Anne is even more of a witch than Jenny Linson. Mm. She is. Yeah, so, she, so she's being watched by these people, and on top of that, across the street, because Mike had driven up there once to show people, because they're like, why don't you just ring the bell? You can't, there's no bell to ring. There's a no. guard. First of all, the the the... The, it's kind of like a highway, right? Like, a, like, so there's really nowhere to stop and Scientology has made it so that you can't pull over there, um, that it's on their actual property uh, unless you're sitting in the middle of the street. Uh, if you drive up to the gate, it's a Sea Org member, a security guard, and he wants nothing to do with you or you trying to get in or, you know, helping Shelly. Right. And, Across the street is a house, Scientology-owned home, that um, security guards live in from um, the, the the PI company, Talent. Yes, that's right. So, Talent showed up on our doorstep, by the way. Oh, in, did they? In LA. Oh, yeah, we have their cards yeah. harassing us and so forth. But yeah, and 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 I've actually, I've never been to CST. I, I know roughly where it is. Um, but yeah. to my knowledge, you can't even get to a human to say where is Shelley. You just push. Well, that's the thing. There's a yeah. there's a there's a there's a driveway kind of up to the secure gate, and then a guard gate, just like right. at Gold, right? And when yes. we went there to try to find Heber Gents, who's also missing, and 
I also want to say that there is about 15 staff members who have also not been seen in public. There's Gam Reserve. There's uh, uh, Mark uh, Midoff, Ray Midoff. Ray Midoff, yep. Mark uh, Yeager. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, Norman Starkey, mm -hmm. Mark Ingber. I mm -hmm. think you said Guillaume Lasserve. Uh -huh. um, gosh, let's see. David Bloomberg has, well, he's been, he was in that LA, uh, LAX video, but I don't think he's been seen since then. Well, let me clarify, Claire. They were, <laughs> they were brought out of the hole, uh, you know, given a shave and a shower and ordered to go to CNN to discredit everyone. Yes. Um, you know, Mike Rinder, Marty Rathbun at the time, um, Tom DeVocht, and they were put right back in the hole. I mean, That's right. it's not like they they were out. But yes, when they were at the CNN studios, they had every chance to go, take me with you. They're holding me. Everything you're saying is true. But you know, when you're brainwashed, uh, it, I, it, I, yeah, no, I know. And that's, that's one of the things that's personally terrifying to me is had, had they succeeded in stopping me from trying to escape, they cro cross state lines to bring me back. Had they succeeded, I could very well be one of those people. Yeah. It's right. terrifying. Or I could it be is. in Shelly's position, unable exactly. to leave. Or you can yeah. get to nobody. Right. Yes. And so then they're put right back in. So the names that we mentioned, you know, if if you're friends or family of these people, you have a responsibility to do something. That's right. It, it's not just about Shelly. Shelly is just somebody that I personally knew. And Claire, by the way, who was senior to me, she was, you know, in RTC, she was in David Miscavige's work, will tell you. That I knew Shelly. Yes, absolutely. I was one of the rare civilian Scientologists that Shelly actually liked. Yes, yeah, we were going through the, the many letters and cards, mm -hmm. and where you were talking about having coffee with her and seeing her. And <laughs> this yes. is not, I mean, she's a real person to both of us. I know. And you even knew her. And, and that's the other thing, Claire. It's like, you knew Shelly. You knew her. You worked with her every day. Yes. You were in David Miscavige's org. You worked for her. Yes. No, I did. I. You did. know that Shelly was worried about the way things were going down. If the woman told you that this is it, there's no way for people like us to escape, that's alarming, Claire. It is. It totally is. It totally is. And and on other occasions, too, she said, you have no idea the position I'm in. I am. This is not like she she said she was not in a good in a good spot because of David Miscavige. Yeah. And and I saw it, you know, he did not. She was not um, excused from his wrath. Well, clearly. Yeah. And there's no way if Shelly knows what she knows that um, he's going to let her out of his sights if she's alive. That's right. And um, that's why we continue to talk about it. It's not because uh, we don't have better things to do with our time. <laughs> exactly. And if it was your daughter, your sister, your friend, imagine it was you. Right. Sitting there for 15 years going, does anybody give up? crap is anybody trying to get to me is any and by the way i if she's alive i don't even know if that's her frame of mind either claire right it would kill me to think that it is absolutely and that and to not know that we didn't try that correct i mean knowing what goes on in scientology the right thing to do is to continue to demand answers correct because the answers are never good, unfortunately. By the way, with any with any evil organization, with any kind of uh, institution, you know, it, it's not an easy fight. It's no. not a short fight, but somebody's got to do it, yeah. right? Like, and there are people doing that work in the world, you know, that have nothing to do with Scientology. Yes, and heroes. Yes, um, because it is not easy going up against these Goliaths of institutions absolutely it's terrifying so, 
Yeah. It's utterly terrifying, but it is the right thing to do. And the and other thing, Claire, that I want to talk about with the Sea Org is that, you know, you, you like Shelly, were raised to believe, uh, well, your Scientology parents gave you up and gave you to Scientology. So you had no parents, yes. uh, like most of us, right? Like my parent was a Scientologist. So everything was, you know, what does L. Ron Hubbard say? If I got into trouble as a kid, it was go see the ethics department. And that's where I would get punished by Scientology. Yeah, as oh. well as condition your parental relationship being entirely conditional love, depending on your cooperation and when, progression in Scientology. In Scientology absolutely yeah. right. And, you know, they stop being your parents. You realize, right. oh, the Sea Org runs my mother. Oh, this this other entity is bigger than my parents. So why don't I just they're my parents, but they yes. become they become your primary caretaker, whether you want to acknowledge that or not. That Absolutely. Is, that is just the truth, right? The That's person right. handing out punishments and rewards, uh, uh, and the person who is really the person taking care of you, which is Scientology, whether or not you're a civilian Scientologist or not. Uh, that becomes your parent. And that was true for Shelly. Shelly yes. was, was in training camps at age five. She was sent to the ship, a Scientology ship with a bunch of teenage girls under L. Ron Hubbard. Um, and her, and, her parental rights were signed over to Hubbard, essentially. Correct. Not essentially. Yes. In her actuality. Parents, yeah. Her parents her. had no yeah. parental rights over her. And this is how it goes in the Sea Org, everybody. Parents... Yeah. Scientology parents are doing this today to their children. Yes. They're like, okay. yeah, my my son, my daughter, take them. It's better that they serve the Sea Org to help the only hope for mankind than to just be living a wog life. And a wog means anything, any, it's a derogatory term and a, and a slang, by the way, a racial slang that Scientologists use to 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 uh, identify non-Scientologists so, and in and um, anything. It could be wog law, wog lawyers, wog police, wog this, wog that, right? Which so, is all inferior and lower and has no authority to a psychologist. Yes. Um, yeah. And, 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 yeah, and Shelly and Shelly was, I haven't been able to establish the exact date, but I, I believe she was 11 years old when she was sent to the ship. Right. From that point forward, her parents, her mother and father, did not know where she even physically was. That's an important part, too. I, I forget what people don't know about the Sea Org. Yes. Um, you're right. They have no right over to even questions, even Scientologists. They have no right to know where their children are, per the yes. Sea Org. They're like, we're the Sea Org. We run you. Yes, you they've know, given over their us. parental rights. Yes. yes. And they and, have no rights. Yeah. Yeah. And any um, punishments levied on Shelly as an 11, 12, 13 year old required no parental approval or authorization of any kind whatsoever. Right. And, and see our children work from the time they wake up till midnight and sometimes. Yes. For I mean, there's no <laughs> schooling, there's no. Uh, oversight no one's watching them child protective services are not being called who's calling them right are you know parents no. yeah no you know, yeah. want to know an interesting story that i've learned yeah. in the course of some of these interviews so yeah. when when the sea org moved to clearwater uh i mean it made some other stops along the way but by the time it set they settled in clearwater so shelly was now in the CMO, in Commodore's Messenger Org still, but in Clearwater. And this was when she was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Because they had because they were pretending not to be Scientology when they first arrived in Clearwater, um, they were sending teenagers to Clearwater High School. So Shelly actually went to Clearwater High School for a few months. The moment oh, did she? Yes. That's that's rare. Yes, yeah. it's incredibly rare. I was shocked. Yeah. The moment, but the purpose was not to get a high school diploma or anything else. It was simply to keep authorities off their back temporarily while they were rooting in Clearwater. And the moment she turned 16, she stopped. I see. Yeah. Well, we were told to say that we were being homeschooled. 
Right. Well, yeah, of course, they refined and changed their system over the years. But but it, it was just fascinating to me because I was like, wow, I never heard of a Sea Org member going to high school. Shelly went weird. to Clearwater High School. That's bizarre. Completely. <laughs> completely bizarre. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, and yes. And so Shelly, which is why I wrote my note. I was so naive when I filed this missing persons report because I actually wrote a letter to Shelly and you guys know this, yes. that I was like, go with this man now. You know, don't listen to what they say. This is not LRH. You would be disappointing him if you stay. You know what I mean? I wrote this letter thinking that it would actually be handed to her. Like I actually believed in my heart that that's the way it was going to happen. That yes, walk up to the Shelly. She'd be with the Scientology handler, pretending to be you know somebody else, and he'd say, "Are you Shelly?" and hand her the thing. She'd read it. She. With him, you know, like I actually believe them. Yes. Um, well, you had hope. There's nothing wrong with having. I did. Hope. I really did. I really, I really believe that. Like this is how you, you go to the good guys, right? And that's and that's part of the problem too that we're having. I think with, um, going to the police now, right? It's like we were taught all our lives that you know police are bad and they're wog police and they're criminals and all these things that Scientology teaches through their hundreds of thousands of policies. Yeah. And when you get out, you go, I'm going to go to the police. I'm going to go to the, you know, because they're the good guys. And then right. you realize, wow, okay, all these years, Polka from the LAPD, Hollywood divisions uh, are, are is friendly with Scientology. And wait a minute, the the Jeff Porter works with this, you know, and, and the guy in the sewer, right? He works with uh, the LAPD and he's very friendly but wait a minute and then you start seeing all these pictures and you're like oh my god I'm so stupid I had no idea you know you really you just have no idea it's such a betrayal I know it is I know is. And, and and talking about that it's so insidious how they train you to distrust yeah. they they literally make you believe there is nobody in the world you can turn to for help nobody well, yes. And then there they are taking pictures with them, hiring them, you know, off duty police officers because the same stuff is going on in Clearwater, right? With the police yeah. department there. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're like, oh my God, you know, what? you have no idea what they really think of you. Right. <laughs> They're using you. They're using you. Yes. And, and then when victims go to uh, report, they have no idea. Their reports get lost automatically. Um, they're calling Scientology and telling Scientology, uh, you know, hey, somebody, one of yours was here. Right. And and how many, I, I just wonder how many people didn't report or did report uh, or tried to go to the LAPD for help or try to go to the Clearwater PD for help or try to go to the Riverside County Sheriff's Office for help and couldn't get it. Right. I know. And and that's after they've already reached the breaking point as a Scientologist. Because... Right, they push through something. They're like, I'm going to take a chance, even though I've, I've been taught that you're the bad guys. And I'm going to just hope that I was wrong. And then they go and they're like, huh. Right. And I know so, it, yeah, it's interesting yeah. that you say that part, because during our lawsuit, uh, yeah. for people who don't know, Mark and I uh, sued Scientology for several causes of action re relating to forced labor uh, labor law violations, forced abortion, and other things. Um, in the deposition with Scientology lawyers, they tried to make a huge deal out of this. Well, you never called the police. Oh. Like, By the way, uh, they don't even have 911 capability in the Riverside, in the, in the uh, at Golden Era Productions. You cannot pick up the phone and call 911. No, you can't call anybody. You can't even call your own mother without somebody being on the phone with you listening. It's ridiculous. Right. It, right. It, it's criminal actually, in terms yeah. of freedom of human beings, it's criminal. Criminal. Wait, did yeah. I cut you off in your story? No, no, you did not. Okay. No. Um, so I listen, I don't want people to think that we're giving up on Shelly. I mean, no. Claire, Claire is doing this uh, podcast uh, because she knew and worked and loved Shelly. Yes. And so this is what she's able to do. And the people that are participating in 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 the podcast and doing that is is to keep Shelley's name out there. 
Yes. Because we have to keep asking, where is Shelly? That's right. Because she has not been found. That's exactly there, right. Nobody actually knows where Shelly is, despite what Scientology says, despite what anybody says in, uh, you know, on social media. We exactly. don't have her. Until we hear from Shelly that Shelly is okay and alive, we yes. will keep asking. Yes, and that's that's what they should be spending. Make the video, please. Yes. Tell Shelly to tell Leah, Claire, Mike, Mark, Eric, whatever. Tell Shelly to tell us to go F ourselves. Yep. At least we'll know that she's alive. Exactly. Which would be step, more than we know right now. And that's step one. Yes. And exactly. we'll continue to do things behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, but we're not going to give up. Yes, exactly. Please, please do one thing for me, Claire. Yes. So Claire was explaining to me some of the insane things that go on in RTC. So that's Religious Technology Center. Now, Mike has also told me things, you know, through the years, obviously, right? With the making you guys do pie face and put, you, know, you know, sit there and he made marionettes of all of them and all that. But you said to me, Claire, that they actually have a motto. Yes. Now, for those of you who might not find it as funny as I do, <laughs> I find it hysterically funny. And it makes me laugh. I don't know, she's done it a hundred times and it still makes me laugh. <laughs> You should know what the motto is. What's the motto of RTC, Claire? When you are in Religious Technology Center, you must be as hard as cold chrome steel. <laughs> hard, wait, say it again. Hard as hard as cold chrome steel. That is clear, your that is your beingness. And you used to, and you used to have to say this like RTC is hard as hard like, as cold chrome steel. Oh and and as I explained to you, I mean, the first time I read this, I was like, how can a human being emulate steel? But you know, if you think about the Terminator, like the metal guy, the oops, the um, the metal fist, like you know, in enforcing anything at all costs, uh, yeah. or you know, with no no feeling um, no empathy, yeah, no, no yeah. feeling yeah. no leaving. Well, those things are not wanted uh, even in, as a scientologist that's right right mm -hmm. so any any empathy and, and compassion that we have for others is suppressed right but that's yes. the very, but those are the very things that allowed us to leave yes that's absolutely right i really struggled trying to be hard <laughs> as cold chrome steel <laughs> Because Claire is so the opposite, but like she isn't. You know what I mean? It's funny. Yes. But when Claire does her imitation, she does this thing. She's like, you know, walking. And it just makes me laugh to see Claire. Because it's almost like I, like if I, I, I don't know. I just, if I was in the Sea Org and I saw you, you know, it would just, I'd be like, oh, Claire. But I, but I get that you're not that. Because I yes. can see the other side too, Claire. Yes. Like you're, you are tough. You are, you just don't, what people don't get is that that doesn't mean being cruel. Um, no. which is what it takes to really be a Sea Org member and a Scientologist. You have to have, um, a, you know, this piece of you that dehumanizes, right? Uh, um, devalues anybody that isn't you, right. and that justifies the behavior uh, of what they do every single day. That's right. And honestly, that's why I help people now, because it's the right thing to do. It's why I continue to speak out. It's why um, I have the I mean, I, of course, I have the greatest respect for you and everything that you've done. I really think you have changed the narrative Thank you. in the world about it's a science. Collective. We're all doing the work. We're yes. all doing the work. And, and then I say that all the time, like, guys, you know, you have your own, uh, you know, influence, right? You, you, you have your own stories, right? It's not up to Claire, me, you know, you have every right to just turn this thing on and do it, right? Yes. Because you can be helping nobody knows your story right somebody mm -hmm. i might not uh you know have an effect on somebody like oh i wasn't in that so i i didn't but 
you know, and Claire, I might not have been, you know, an RTC. Maybe I can't relate to it. So you have your own stories. And, you know, if you save one person and if you, somebody hears your story and you inspire them to fight uh, for something else in their life that has nothing to do with Scientology, just right. abuse or being really who you are, you know, because yeah. you have to fight to be who you really are. And that's not always accepted. Yes. Um, and so you could inspire your own group of people. I just say, just do it. Just do, do your own work. We need good people in the world. We need people doing good things and you can inspire people and you could be uh, ins inspired. Right. But, yes. <laughs> um, and Claire and Mark, they won't say this, but they've helped um, dozens of people. I mean, taken them into their homes, um, supported them, got them jobs, got them cars, fed them morning, noon, and night, clothed them. And these people just kind of go on with their lives. And that's hard. That's hard to deal with. And yeah. um, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> these are, these are they're, they're good people. And what they do for the Aftermath and the Aftermath Foundation, they go far beyond that. Um, they've used their own money. They've done this on their own um, to just help people that, that, that couldn't help themselves and, and needed uh, people to care. And they did. And they don't they don't ask for anything in return. So I want to say that about Mark and Claire, because they're they're beautiful people and what they do. They don't talk about as are you, by the way. And thank you so I, much I, for I doing this. About the good stuff that I do. Claire, <laughs> I do want validation. <laughs> well, <laughs> No, nah, no comment. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you. I love so you. much for your time today. It's incredibly valuable to me. And, and again, your piece in this, I mean, you are the person that seeded this plant that's grown into a forest that's now planetary of where is Shelly and we're going to keep this going until we know where Shelly is. That's right. I love you. Thank love you. you. Thank you.